Hello, this is Steve Andres. Um, this is going to be a little bit different. Now, sometimes people influence you. And <laughs> something happened yesterday, and I was having dinner with a friend. And I was explaining to her that you know, there's not too many people that look at my videos, and um, and I, I kind of explained to her, you know, I, I I want to give back and try to share what I have with people, and you know, I don't really know how to work the system of YouTube or any of that. It's just I'm a novice, make a lot of mistakes, but I you know I still think I have something to offer. Uh, my, my work is a little different because it is kind of detailed. Um, and she, her name is Prisca. She explained to me that my work is really detailed and it's not that easy. And I used to teach her daughter uh, how to paint and uh, draw uh, along with another student at my house. Um, and um, she asked her daughter, can you show me how to do a jellyfish the way Mr. Steve showed you? <laughs> and she said she struggled like <laughs> you can't believe. And I was thinking, wow, I thought it was fairly simple. Now, I've taught every level from kindergarten to college and try to adjust myself um, to that level. Um, now this is going to be a little bit more of the life and times of a mu museum artist. I did a lot of different things, sculpting, designing, scientific illustration, making dioramas, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, and um, been at the middle school. And my thoughts were, I have uh, some of those students that eventually became eighth graders that they had me for a couple of semesters and I was making them Create stuff that is high school or college level, but I guess I had them for several semesters and their parents insisted that They get my class Sometimes every semester and they did improve and they did some wonderful things now This is going to be coral and I'm just going to do some coral things first uh, now coral has this weird kind of uh, and this is one of those things I was trying to... Computer, cancel! Um, Coral has these weird kind of things going all over the place. And I'm using an Asian brush. And by doing this really quick, loose method, it will look more like coral. Not a specific type. There could be a lot of them that look like this. But uh, I'm, so, I'm doing like four different parts of a piece that I'm working on. And I'm going to try to make it so it looks, maybe it's a little bit easier to understand, hopefully. So I'm going to do another one. And it, it's kind of this, I call it... Uh, 20 cups of coffee or doodle art. So this thing looks like I have a n nervous condition, but it helps with the the realism of my work for some crazy reason. Now what's going to happen, and you're going to see it didn't take that long, is there's going to be some light and dark spots. Now if you look at coral, um, they have a lot of little creatures or living animals in it. And if I come in here when it's wet, it's going to just naturally bleed out. But those little edges, if I even come in here, will make a realistic looking So I'm just doing some ultramarine. Now this thing will spread naturally 
but it will look natural because it's just bleeding out and it'll take a life of its own and you can see hopefully this makes sense because I always thought when I was doing the demonstration I was doing the painting it just made sense but maybe it doesn't so now when I get to this point um, and you're gonna see this one in my my latest recent painting um, there's like little stones and while it's wet I'm just gonna come back in here and I can come from a direction and because it's wet it just bleeding out similar to this so you can see it's dark but it's going from really light to medium to dark but it gives the object form a roundness um, now this you could do it when it's dry but it works a lot easier and faster when it's still somewhat damp now I'm gonna be doing and just working and I'm gonna be explaining a little bit more who I am because it I think it's necessary um, I work for the Natris Museum in Los Angeles now it's a very specialized profession um, it's not like you know I can just go down the street and get another job like that and I loved working at the museum being creative you know making dioramas ancient civilization working with a lot of the scientists on their scientific papers um, I mean just endless type of things uh, pulling my imagination and my talents in places I never thought I could um, and was there for almost 15 years um, and thought I was going to be there forever but the museum hired a excuse me hired a new director and that director decided because it was that type time of the era that she was going to follow the current market trends was outsource everything or a lot of things um, of course I thought I was secure because not only did I make money for them but I was helping um, a lot of different departs and departs with my scientific illustrations had papers published um, the whole nine yards um, and so I thought my job was secure so they did the, the the standard oh you know thing where they have all these team building things and workshops and and everybody kind of knew well that's just the precursor for people are going to get laid off so we went through all that kind of rigmarole and um, and of course you have to justify why you were there and what you did and all this stuff the standard thing they're gonna get rid of you anyway but they needed to do that so it looks legit anyway so after 15 years of working for them they let me and a quarter of the staff people that were there longer than I was sometimes t more than 20 years now it's not like you can get another museum job I mean equivalent to uh, the one in Los Angeles, I would have to go move, that's if they had an opening. Something equivalent, I would have to go to San Francisco in the Natural History Museum, or I would um, have to go to San Diego, which is another nice museum. Um, and then, you know, there's one in Dallas that's pretty nice, one in Florida and one in New York, which is a really big one. Um, but they don't really have openings and it would be probably a long time before I got a job it's not like you know getting a I don't, know, I don't want to put anybody's job down but there's a lot of certain type of jobs it's a very specialized job <clears throat> anyway so uh, when they laid me off it just kind of broke my heart it was just like all that time you know that I worked for the company and poured everything I had into it um, I was just disposable um, and 
Okay, so that cut off there a little bit, and I was trying to show um, how to do this, and I was working on them, and didn't realize the video cut out. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, I'm just going to try to show you how I did the sea anemone. It's all one stroke. And they're just going to overlap. There's no rhyme or reason on this right now. Um, hopefully you're, you're going to be able to understand what I just did there. It's going to look like that. Not totally because I was working on that and I didn't know the video cut out. Anyway. Uh, I guess I dropped off as I was disposable from the museum after being there. And um, my wife and I decided to reinvent ourselves and we moved to eastern New Mexico because we were going to go to school. I was going to be a radiologist and um, my wife was going to be a nurse. Um, uh, so I was just going to get a n normal job because I didn't want to ever go through that experience of being laid off and having uh, such a specialized profession that I <laughs> would be lost. Um, but life is funny. Um, I didn't even have my bags unpacked. Um, <laughs> Yes, they were still in boxes, and uh, that was the first week we moved there. I'm going to pull some color out right now, and it's going to show some going further back, just by pulling out some in front. So let's just, I want to pull this one on front here. So I'm just going to pull the color out. Um, this is just a damp brush right now. Um, once I pull the color out, it's going to automatically put the other ones behind. You can see I'm just going down the center. Anyway, so um, as I had some extra time, as we're unpacking, uh, we already signed up for classes and bought a house sight unseen. Because we figured we were only going to be there for three years. And then move on. Um, wrote a letter to the local college and said I was in town if you need me to do a lecture um, just let me know um, anyway I, I s sent it to one of the art instructors at the college and he was retiring and he saw my website and he showed the website to Dr. Lloyd which she changed my life completely um, she saw my work and she said, please teach it class or teach for us. And I said, I was going into radiology and she said, well, just teach one class at night. And I did and I loved it and I knew that this was, I need to give back of the knowledge I had. Now you can see that by pulling it out, it put those other ones behind. Now if I put some light right here, this one will put that one behind this one. Now, I know I'm making it look easy and it isn't, but uh, I'm trying to do it as simplified as I could possibly get. Um, listening to Prisca's advice that my work is detailed and it's not that easy. So I'm trying to do it as easy as possible. Now, I've seen a lot of students kind of develop that did some phenomenal work, but they've had me for a while. Um, so I'm trying to do this to explain how I'm doing stuff. Now... I did go into this thing right here because um, corals have different colors and um, I was just doing some random sh color shapes in here. They don't ha all have to be circular. And I would do the same thing. i pull the color out. This is a darker color so it probably require a little bit more time. But it automatically gives volume by pulling the color as out. 
And it's blending it. Now, there is kind of another thing you could do with this. Um, say you got to this point. You can also come back into one of any of these and just do some random dots. And that could be part of the coral that has like different creatures on it. And the shading and the roundness will still be there. But it'll look like there's living creatures like coral on there. Very simple thing. I think it's simple. Now, it's best to look at reference, but don't be locked into the reference so that you're trying to do exactly what it looks like. Now, if I was in scientific mode, I would have to do it exactly the way it looked. Um, but I'm not working for a museum, I'm working for myself or my pleasure. Anyway, you can see just a little t tap of this changes everything. Now, I'm going to do a jellyfish. Let's see if I... Okay. Um, and actually, this is the one Prisco was talking about. That uh, <laughs> she tried and it was just like, oh, no, this is, I can't do this. And what I did is... And you can see, I left this layers thing. So this lighter layer was behind there. And then I went over another layer and just put the strokes and just let it just slowly blend down, blend down and drip. Now it just gives us a real smooth background. Um, but I had a, just a little basic outline of a uh, jellyfish now. And that's the way I did the jellyfish there. Um, now this would have gone all the way down in the whole paper would have been covered and if I wanted these colors bright I would actually stop where these things ended so they wouldn't be washed over I could leave some with blue in the background so basically I'm going to do exactly what I did there and pull the color out now I don't know if I mentioned this as I was talking before um, I'm just going to repeat it because I don't have to look at what I said before. Um, and you can see I'm pulling the colors out. Now it makes that roundness. So it looks like it's round, like a jellyfish. Um... So anyway, I was explaining to her that, you know, nobody's really looking at my videos. There's, you know, sometimes one person per day, <laughs> sometimes 10, which is a rare thing. Um, sometimes only 40 views in six months. And I know I'm not really good at this YouTube thing. Um, but, you know, I see stuff that out, out there that's like, and I don't want to bag on anybody's work some of it is you know uh, I, don't know. I, I, I don't want to yeah it just um, they do something in 10 minutes and it's like 43,000 views in one day <laughs> I don't know how they did that but people love what what they did I guess but I don't know how they got that many in such a short amount of time um, so she said, well, why don't you do something, you know, real simple and try to explain what you're doing. And I thought, well, okay, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, so this is the way I would do that. Now, the stinging cells are in the one uh, third middle section. Now, I would just kind of, you know, I don't know if I can, because it is dry now. But I'm just going to pull the color out. But I'm only going to stay in the middle third. And I might have to go because this is dry now, so it's going to take a little bit more time. But anyway, I would just be going in here. And eventually, I would be able to do it with... Um,
I like doing it with um, just pulling the color out, but I could also do it with white paint and just do the squiggly thing. Now, I would use fresh white paint. Um, this one's uh, not as bright white as I would like it. And I would just do these kind of swirl things to make it look like red leaf lettuce. And overlap it. Um, now, and this might be kind of brief. So they do have these, and I, you can see there's like no rhyme or reason to this. It's just random, and nature is random. And each one of these will look different. And this is the way I would do the bottom part. And I would do a little lighter dome in here. Now, I would do the stinging cells. Now the stain cells um, would be all the way across, and they'd be short. This thing could stretch out very far. Now this you would have to practice, not on the paper, because uh, you want to do it all in one stroke. So before you do it on a painting, make sure you're able to do this because this one stroke thing is a, a very difficult thing. I know that because I've seen it in my students and they have a lot of trouble with this. So if you can just get one stroke and you get used to doing that, that's how you would do the jellyfish. Anyway, hopefully this works and explains a few things. Thank you. Steve Melendres out. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm gonna be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's gonna go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm gonna be doing videos uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now. So I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.